grace, and peace. Welcome to Judas Roar Domestic Violence Awareness Initiative YouTube channel. I'm your host, Apostle Cheryl. Today's topic is helping a survivor. We're going to talk about 10 ways that you can help a survivor of domestic violence. Okay, but before we get started, take a few moments, check down here, click that subscribe button if you've not done so already. Make sure you click the bell for notifications. We release a new YouTube video premiere every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, let's get started. We're talking about helping a survivor. One of the first things that you can do is to be intentional about asking before touching or hugging a survivor. Ask permission. You know, may I give you a hug? Okay, ask permission before you touch them. Oftentimes they are uh, uh, very, very anxious, uh, dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder, um, having been verbally assaulted, physically assaulted in many, many cases. So mind their personal space and their boundaries which is something that the abuser absolutely violates, okay? Uh, a violation of your personal space is inherent in domestic violence situations. Certainly, with us all dealing with this pandemic globally, uh, with COVID-19 and all of its many variants, we want to be safe and practice social distancing whenever possible. But in an event that you're with a survivor and they're sharing something with you, and you feel like they need encouragement, ask permission before you touch or hug them, okay? That's number one. Number two, when you are talking to them and asking for clarification, be sure to use their own words, um, the words that they're using to describe their experience. Okay, so that raises a question. What if they say, well, Joe was just having a bad day and She's a little irritable, and but you recognize that the behaviors that she has described that Joe has engaged in are abusive. Rather than making a statement, well, that's abusive. He's abusing you or she's abusing you. Phrase it this way in the form of a question. Well, have you considered that maybe that's abusive? Have you considered this or it kind of sounds like it might be that. As opposed to being, you know, even if you are convinced and you know that it is, give them space and room to arrive at that conclusion themselves. It's only then that they will feel comfortable to even consider taking an action that will better ensure their safety. OK, so use their own words. And if you feel that they're what they're sharing with you um, is riddled with the rationalizations and minimization then ask in the form of a question, well, do you think that might be abusive? Or do you think that might be a little over the top? Or hasn't that happened more than once? You know what I mean? So ask in a compassionate way, giving them time to consider what you are saying, okay? Number three, believe them. Believe them. If someone tells you that they're being mistreated, believe them. Don't come out of the starting block with 10 kajillion questions about are you sure and what exactly is happening. Believe them. Believe them. Okay? Number four, understand that a victim may disclose their abuse days, weeks, months, even many, many years after it has taken place. I'm going to say that again. Understand that a victim may reveal their abuse, their history of abuse, what they have endured, days, weeks, months, even many, many years after the abuse has taken place or after the abuse has begun. This is not at all unusual for many, many, many different reasons. Um, here's the thing. Don't take it personally that they haven't told you. Don't take it personally that they haven't told you. Because then this whole thing becomes focused on you and not them. And that's exactly what the abuser does. Focuses on what they need as opposed to what the victim needs. So 
Understand that it's not unusual for them to, to, to conceal it for very long periods of time. Make a decision not to take it personally that he didn't tell you. It's very easy to get caught up in, well, I thought I was your best friend. I thought we were close. I thought we shared everything with each other. You know, I shared all of my horrible experiences with you. And then you hid this from me. Resist the urge to do that. Okay. So that's number four. Number five. Don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. Number four is understand that they may not disclose for a long period of time. Number five, don't take it personally. Okay? Don't do that. Number six, remind them that the abuse is not their fault. No one deserves to be abused. No one deserves to be maltreated. No one deserves to be hit. No one deserves to be cursed out, threatened, terrorized, stalked, strangled, no one deserves it. Remind them of this because most victims struggle with that. They are so ground down and so beat down verbally, financially, and all these other ways that they come to believe the abusers lie that somehow it's their fault and somehow they deserve it. Now I'm saying even if they've done something wrong, even if they've done something that you as a supporting person in their life, totally disagrees with, they did not deserve to be abused, okay? Remind them of this as many times as you need to. Number seven, this is gonna be a challenge. Support their decision-making. By nature, by nature, abuse strips the victim of power it strips them of control. It strips them of self-confidence. And so respect that they're trying to make a decision from a depleted place, from a place where they've been depleted spiritually, emotionally, physically, uh, financially, in all these other ways, psychologically, that they've been depleted um, by this individual, that they trusted, that they allowed into their life, okay? Encourage them to make decisions at their own pace and to make decisions that they are comfortable with. And this is important because invariably someone who's a supporting person will experience this desire to kind of take over and make sure this person is safe and make decisions for them, but they have to be able to walk it out. And they know that abuser better than anybody. They know what that abuser is capable of, okay? They know that individual. And so trust their ability to, in time, make the right choice, to make a healthy choice. Um, but respect that it's a process for them. They may not move as quickly as you, as you would like. And also, on average, a woman leaves seven times before she leaves for good. So this is a cycle that you could be going through. So self-care is important too. Make sure you take care of yourself, okay? Ask how you can help. Don't be intrusive in terms of forcing help upon them because they've already been disempowered. They're already feeling depleted. They're already feeling isolated, okay? And also you don't want, and also you don't want to give the abuser any leverage um, when they try to say that you're intrusive or you're a bad influence, that you really don't understand them, that you're just trying to make them do what you want them to do. Okay, so you have to use wisdom. You have to use wisdom. Encourage them to make decisions. Ask, how can I help you? You just need me to listen. Let's do a safety plan. Um, let's document everything that's been happening with you. Uh, how can I help you? What do you need from me? Okay. Um, and then whatever they decide, be supportive. Now, that doesn't mean if they say to you, well, I'm afraid for my life and I'm afraid to leave and I'm going to stay here and that's my decision. I'm not suggesting that you say, yay, that's awesome and that's wonderful. Express your concern, okay? Respect their right to make their own choice, okay? Lest you find yourself going down the same path that the abuser has chosen to take. Uh, by trying to make them do things the way that you want them done, okay? 
provide local resource information. The best thing you can do is educate yourself and then to educate them in turn. Our YouTube channel is an excellent source of, of information regarding so many different aspects of domestic violence. The domestic violence hotline is another outstanding uh, resource, domesticshelters.org. There is help out here, Stand Up Survivor. Uh, these are all organizations that, you know, Unstoppable You Ministries, so many advocates um, out here. And so although uh, you as a supporting person may feel isolated, there's help out here. So the best thing you can do is educate yourself and then offer these resources in a safe manner to the person that you are concerned about. Number 10, number 10, know your own limits. Know your own limits. Know how far you can go and remain healthy. Know how far you can go and remain healthy, okay? You can be a better resource to your friend or your loved one if you are healthy yourself. It's okay not to have all the answers. Connect them to local resources in their community. Remind them that the abuse is not their fault. Remind them that you are supportive of them. Let them know that you're concerned about their personal safety or their emotional well-being, but that you care about them and they can count on you listening to them in a non-judgmental fashion, okay? So what did we say? Ask before touching or hugging a survivor. Use their own words when they're describing their experience. When you're reflecting back to them, use their own words. If it seems as though they're rationalizing or minimizing their experience, phrase it in the form of a question. Well, have you considered that maybe that's abusive and this is why? Leave it so that they can process that in their own time and arrive at their own conclusion, okay? Um, believe them, believe them. If you don't believe them, please don't. If you don't believe them, don't say, I don't believe you. Just don't say anything. But don't, don't shut a door in their face and thereby drive them back into the control of the abuser, okay? Because the abuser is already telling them that nobody's going to believe them. Nobody's going to believe you. People like me, they'll know you're making it up. Don't reinforce what the, the abuser is saying to them, even in your shock and dismay, okay? Understand that they may disclose their abuse or their experience days, weeks, months, or even many, many years post-abuse. Don't take it personally. Don't make it about you. Don't make it take it personally, okay? Um, remind them as often as you must, gently and firmly, that the abuse is not their fault. Even if they've engaged in behaviors that the abuser has decided justifies their abusive conduct. No one deserves to be abused. Encourage them to make decisions that they believe are best Remind them that you are there for them. Be supportive of them. Let them know, listen, even if I don't think that the decision that you're making is the best decision, I do respect your right to choose for yourself, okay? Provide local resource information and then know your own limits. All right. Thank you for spending time with us today. We hope that this video has been helpful to you. Uh, regarding how you can best help a survivor. I am Apostle Cheryl with Judas Roar, Domestic Violence Awareness Initiative, and we'll be back with you all next week. Blessings to you.